The word ye hear are not mine, but the Father that sent me, he had given me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak, even as the Father that said unto me, so I speak. There is not a single and equivocal statement in any version of the Bible where Jesus says, I'm God, or where he says, worship me. There is not a single explicit statement, an equivocal statement, a plain, simple statement. There isn't. If there is, we Muslims would have no hesitation in accepting it. Simply because we know that Jesus Christ, as one of the mightiest messengers of God, he would never lie. The questions being asked, either he was a liar, you know, generally the Christians, he must be a liar or a lunatic or God. Why should you pro make such propositions? Why cannot the man be a mighty messenger of God? Why should he be a liar or a lunatic? Again and again in Christian literature, evangelists, they say either he's a liar or an imposter. Is the oppos opposite of liar, imposter, what is it? God is the opposite of God, imposter. Is the opposite of God, lunatic? No. What is the antonym for? God. Is there? How can you say this or that, this or that? Why can't he be what he claims to be, that he is a messenger of God? And as such, follow him. He says, he is not of me, who does not take his cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. If you follow me, you will get eternal life. Listen to him, you hearken to him, what he says, what he teaches. And that is salvation. If you don't do that, verily, verily, I say unto you, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. There's no heaven for you unless you are better than the Jew. And you can't be better than the Jew by not keeping the laws and the commandments. Listen to him, follow him, and if you follow him, you can't help being a Muslim. Wa dawan and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Thank you very much, Mr. Vida. What we're going to do at this point in time is for those, and I realize what a terrible trial it is of, of patience just to hold back when you, you really want to get behind one speaker or another. But I do want to thank you for that patience and for making this debate a debate, and not a confrontation. What we'd like to offer you the chance of doing now is to have your own part in this. Now, it is impossible to offer to five and a half thousand people the right to participate in a debate by uh, leaving your seat in any form. So what we're going to suggest is this. I'm going to be asking the two speakers in just a moment to speak for a maximum of eight minutes each in rebuttal of each other's position. We are then going to take questions. And if there is a question you would like to ask, if you could phrase it as courteously as possible, and if you would write your question on a piece of paper and pass it to your left until it reaches the aisle. And if you are at the last seat right next to the aisle, you'll collect the questions that come from your row, hold them in your hand, and stewards when people have had a chance to do, to do that, will you walk down the aisle and collect the questions? Then stewards, you are to bring those questions down to the rear, behind me here, right down to the rear, uh, where you will be met by a box, or by someone holding a box who will collect the questions. They will then be brought in here and drawn impartially. We'll shuffle them up and uh, if you're fortunate enough to have your question, then that will be asked. We're going to ask you to do that in just one moment. We're going to also say this. Please do not try to leave your seat or come forward. If you want to have a quiet wriggle, now is your opportunity to do it. In about 15 seconds, I'm going to ask Dr. Shirosh to begin his reply. So a moment or two of silence. You can start writing your questions. Please don't leave your seat, just pass them to your left. 
have a good wriggle, get rid of the, any of the cramps or problems that way. <coughs> now may I ask you for silence. Right, can we have complete quiet? Grateful for your courtesy and for your appreciation and respect of Dr. Shirosh. I'm going to ask him if he would come and make his reply, please, to what Mr. Didat has said. Thank you. What a delightful bunch you are. And what a joy it is to stand before you and make replies to my friend, Mr. Didat. Concerning the statement about Jesus saying he was God, I first call your attention to John 13, 13. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Remember, please, if the Queen of England walks in here 